Welcome back friends. So in previous two videos we have seen the theoretical approach or theoretical way of designing the heat exchanger network through pinch design method. So if we just take the look there are two regions above pinch and below pinch. Above pinch what we need is your hot stream should be less than or equal to cold streams right when you are trying to match them and uh, your heat capacity of hot stream at pinch point has to be less than heat capacity of the cold stream at pinch point when you are trying to place the matches if you are away from pinch this particular criterion can be you know waved off but we need to check that this is not violating delta t minimum basically this is done both the criterion are there to make sure that you know the delta t minimum condition is not violated nor we are using wrong utility at the uh, above pinch or below pinch region so what we know now is that when we want to design a heat exchanger network right we need to make sure that above pinch your number of hot stream have to be less than or equal to cold stream and when you are trying to place the matches at pinch from where we start your heat capacity of hot stream have to be less than that of cold stream and for below pinch number of hot stream have to be more than that of cold stream and heat capacity of the cold stream uh, hot stream have to be more than that of cold stream at the pinch point let us try and see one example so that we get some idea about how to implement those rules so let's say we take an example of a four stream which are where two are cold two are hot right delta h is given heat capacity flow rates are given so first thing we'll do is we'll uh, do the uh, you know uh, we'll perform the problem table analysis for the given set of data and what we get from uh, problem table analysis is we get minimum hot utility minimum cold utility pinch temperature and uh, you know pinch temperature for cold and hot streams right so if delta t minimum is 10 right minimum hot utility requirement for this problem turns out to be 7.5 megawatt and cold utility turns out to be 10 megawatt pinch point is 150 for hot streams and 140 for the cold stream so this is above pinch region and as we can see here that i have drawn a pinch uh, line here my hot streams are going from 250 to 150 200 to 150 right i have written cp values here so 0 0.15 0 0.25 0 0.2 and 0.3 what we need to do is we need to calculate the heat associated with every stream for this particular region that is for stream number two right as we discussed in one of the videos my heat uh, heat content of this stream which it can pass on to cold stream is 250 minus 150 that is 100 into 0 0.5 0 0.15 making it 15 200 minus 150 for stream number four which is 50 into 0.25 likewise right it is always a good idea to write cp values for your stream in descending order so that you get to know that where you want to you know match so since cp hot stream have to be less than or equal to cp c stream uh, uh, cold stream here we know that for every hot stream right there is a cold stream which has a cp value greater than that so you can very easily match the pairs plus we have got two hot streams and two cold streams so there are no issues as far as stream splitting is concerned so let us write uh, the step calculate the enthalpy associated with each stream for getting getting them to pinch point so for example for stream 2 delta h is 15 megawatt similarly for stream 4 it is 12.5 megawatt stream 1 it is 8 megawatt 14 to 0.2 and for stream 3 it is 19 to 0.3 making it 27 megawatt so now it is about placing the matches so how do we do that so i know that stream number 2 has 15 megawatt right and uh, stream number one has eight megawatt plus uh, the requirement of stream number one is eight megawatt and uh, stream number two can give away 15 megawatt right now stream number three requires 27 megawatt and stream number four can give away the 12.5 megawatt why i am talking about two with one and four with three is because my cp values are like that right so my cp value says that i have to you know exchange energy when stream is at pinch point that is when this is at 150 right i have to 
connect it at the stream which is at pinch point where CP value has to be higher than that. So 0.5 I'll exchange energy with 0.2 CP and 0.25 I'll exchange with 0.3. I'll not exchange 0.25 with 0.2 when both of them are at pinch point. I can do that at a later stage as I already told you. So when I dis when I exchange this energy and this energy, what will happen is this stream will actually move from this to this by giving away heat and this stream actually moves from this to this. Right. So this is the direction actually. However, what we try to do is we'll try to find the temperatures right so uh, stream number 4 which has got the you know amount 12.5 megawatt exchanging it with stream number 3 stream number 3 needs 27 so naturally this 12.5 if i exchange this is tick off and this stream is running from 200 to 150 is what we have achieved so this stream is ticked off and no longer required in further discussion stream number two right has 15 megawatt and stream number one requires 8 megawatt so we'll exchange 8 megawatt between these two and then this stream is ticked off so for further consideration only these two streams are there i hope you are able to understand that so if i if i go to the next slide right Right, so once I do that, then I'll at the end I'll place place the hot utility. But let us do take that one by one. So this is something which we do, which I already explained. Stream number four and stream number three exchange 12.5 megawatt, and stream number two and one will exchange eight. So this is ticked off. This is ticked off. Then I'll calculate the intermediate temperature for the streams where still there is energy which it can provide or there is still scope of energy which is to be received like this stream has not reached its target temperature that is stream number three and stream number two a has not reached its source temperature which is 250 and hence i have to i can exchange energy between them now see here the cp value is 0.15 and this cp value is 0.3 so my cph right is still less than cpc so i have no problem in exchanging energy between this and this so what i can do next is i can exchange energy between this and this whatever is remaining so this requires as such this requires 27 megawatt out of that 12.5 megawatt it has already received right this is exchange 8 and how much it has left with stream number 2 stream number 2 has total 15 megawatt so since it has exchanged 8 I can exchange further 7 megawatt with stream number 3. So stream number 3 receives 7 megawatt and once that is done, stream number 2 is also reaching its source temperature. So this stream is done, this stream is done, this stream is done. I am only left with stream number 3 which requires 27 minus 7 minus 12.5. So total requirement was 27 out of which it has re received 19. 5 megawatt of energy so remaining which is going to be 7.5 is my hot utility and this is exactly what our mass balance has or oh sorry energy balance has given to us so we get 7.5 megawatt hot utility above pinch so this is how i can place the matches right the same problem can also be done in other way as well but then the the moment you change the places right of uh, matches right uh, the final version may come different as far as the network is concerned however the required utility will not change right because this is all tight energy balance right now let us uh, talk about the uh, design below the pinch now the, below pinch we have got two hot streams and one cold stream right and we know that what we require below pinch is number of hot stream have to be greater than or equal to number of cold stream so we are safe as far as splitting is concerned from the perspective of the requirement of the number of streams right so here stream number two runs from 150 to its you know uh, uh, target temperature of 40 this goes from 150 to target temperature of 80 and this runs from 20 its source temperature to 140 right same thing which we did there We'll write CP values here. This is CP hot. This is CP cold. We'll calculate the energy associated with each stream. So stream number one, below pinch region, requires 
sorry stream number 2 requires 16.5 megawatt similarly stream number 4 requires like can can give away 7.5 not requires but it can give away 7.5 megawatt of energy and stream number 1 requires 24 megawatt and the remaining uh, you know uh, exchange of energy for hot stream would be done by with the help of cold utility so here also we'll do the same first we'll exchange we'll try to exchange whatever is there so i can easily exchange uh, you know stream number 4 with 2 because i require cp hot to be greater than cpc so that this comes away from the pinch point so uh, i'll cool it uh, I'll, I'll you know this will receive the energy from this stream and it reaches from this temperature to 140 so the requirement for stream number 1 is 24 megawatt whereas stream number 4 can give only uh, stream number 4 can give only 17.5 so i can exchange here 17.5 megawatt so this will be ticked off right this stream is still there with me but this will be at an intermediate temperature correct and mind well as i told you will always start exchanging energy from the pinch point will not start from source or target temperature so we'll always calculate the backward temperatures right so we always start from the most constraint region whenever we design a heat exchanger so with this if i go to the next slide so this is something which we have done 17.5 this is ticked off right then once this is ticked off this is 52.5 is the intermediate temperature right it, it has to go to 20 this is at 150 this is at 52.5 right and uh, this receives energy right so this requires 24 right out of which it has received 17.5 stream number 2 has 16.5 whereas this required requires only 6.5 so stream number two can give away 6.5 now look at this this is this is away from pinch this stream is away from pinch and hence its temperature is 52.5 its cp value is 0.2 which is more than that of 0.15 so actually you know uh, 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 if i if i stick to cp requirements where cp hot has to be greater than cpc right then there is an issue but since the starting temperature difference you just see this is 150 so the starting delta t right is 100 degree almost if i consider this as 100 degree right even if it converges right the temperature difference which will come will be higher than delta t minimum which is 10 in this case so you don't need to worry when it is away from the uh, you know pinch point so this is it will receive energy and it will move from 20 to 52.5 and this will go from 152 it's uh, you know intermediate temperature 106 because stream number 2 has actually the capacity to pass on 16.5 however this requires only 6.5 so even the energy exchange is less so the change in temperature for hot stream is very less so even this 106 is way beyond this so you need not worry you can you know release the look and you know you can uh, uh, you know neglect the or ignore rather the constraint about uh, cp values since the hot stream is away from uh, you know pinch point and you can place this match and thereby this case ticked off and this still has some amount of energy left which is nothing but equivalent to your required cold utility which is nothing but 10 megawatt so you place 10 megawatt and write the intermediate temperatures so you know uh, you can separately design above pinch and below pinch but your network should look like this only that it should have all intermediate temperatures wherever needed see if it is ticked off in one you don't need to write anything you just have to put this tick mark that this directly indicates that this requires 17.5 megawatt so that it reaches from this source temperature to pinch point right in fact sorry pinch point to source temperature uh, target temperature because this is a hot stream whereas in this case it requires two exchanges and that's why there is an intermediate temperature which is mentioned here in the same way this cold stream also has an intermediate temperature the same thing we did for design above the pinch that you have shown all the intermediate temperature as you can see here that is the way you you know show the heat exchanger networking right so this was a simpler example we will see some more complex examples of heat exchanger networking using PDM in our upcoming videos. Thank you.